everyone, this is Hudson Vintage. Today we are going through one of my first jewelry boxes. This was one of the first boxes that I filled up. It was a gift from my mother one Christmas and it's a good illustration of how my collection uh, got more and more individual and personal as I started collecting vintage jewelry, which to me is the whole point of vintage jewelry, is that it's so one of a kind and such an expression of your personal style. So I thought this would be fun because it really just shows sort of in a timeline how I went from kind of the ordinary inherited pieces, you know, in Christmas presents and things to an informed collector and knowing and learning what I was looking at through the course of the time. So this is a lot of jewelry, so I'm probably going to just get through the earrings today and then we'll go through the two tiers in a few days. My goal is to put two videos out within a week and then next the swelling from the oral surgery will be gone and I'll be able to do more of a how to wear it or style video that I've been done to do those creative videos are so much fun for me. So stay tuned for that. If you're here for that, it is coming. And please don't forget to subscribe, click like, ring the bell, and get notified when I make a new video so you don't miss out. And I'm going to start with this. This is by request. This was seen in another video, um, my rare vintage jewelry video, and it's a coin ring from the 1990s. And it's 14 karat gold, and yeah, get it closer. There we go. This is a 14 karat gold. It's an authentic Italian lira coin that is in 14 karat gold, and then it's been added to a 14 karat gold wedding band style um, ring, and that was done in the 1990s, and it's by Jacques Mel and it's hallmarked on the inside and you can see the, the band is really really nice and if you want that friend of the channel who requested to see it um, just let me know you have my email my email for anyone out there is hudsonvintage at me.com and this is my personal collection but if there are a few things in here that i decide to sell just email me at hudsonvintage at me.com and we will set it up and also I am Hudson Vintage on Instagram and Facebook and Patreon. So where shall I put this? I'll put this to the side. Okay, oh, and these are in no chronological order, but I will do my best to explain how I arrived at them as time went on. So this, these are early, oh, I love these, look at these. These are early Joan Rivers from QVC when she first started, and I loved them so much, and I recognized what she was doing as future vintage, so I made sure to do some purchases, and by then I had just started to move away from, you know, the more ordinary hoops and studs and things and getting really into vintage jewelry, and so I bought these, and I feel that that was an informed decision. And then these are great to look out for. I knew these were going to increase in value. These are ex these are an exquisite example of Nobium. These are artist signed. And you can see that they have work. There's the metal work that's sterling. And then look at the back. And then there's also crystal there. And they're really, really exquisite. And these I got probably 10 years ago, and I just watched them increase in value. I probably found them on eBay. And yes, I did, because I was doing set completion syndrome, the dreaded SCS, and I had found the torque, the collar necklace and cuff over time, and so I really wanted the earrings. And I recommend that if you're an early collector, it's a good way to sort of get inspired to add to your collection is look for pieces that are related to each other or even matching each other because they'll increase the value of the pieces you already have. And then these are little turquoise drops. These are very indicative of my early kind of ordinary collection be before I became a serious vintage jewelry collector. Those were gifts from my mom. And then this is really what started the obsession. I had this 
thing for enameled Chinese enamel and gilt jewelry. And I also, pansies are my favorite flower. I love pansies. And so I was a pansy collector and a Chinese enamel collector. And I found these and I just fell absolutely in love with them. They have, they're old and they have tiny pearls on the inside and the enameling is exquisite. And there is even green leaves in the back. They're like a little hidden treasure just for you because no one sees those. Just the person who puts them on. That's how fine the work is. And I call pansies the flowers with the faces. They look like little puppies to me. <laughs> then I will always love pansies and I'm still collecting pansies and I'm still collecting Chinese enamel, but these got me started. These and the hummingbird earrings, which I'll show you in a little while. And then these are, I got these express, at Express when I was in my 20s, wore them all the time to work. You know, square, drop, CZs, very normal. These, I would love to find more of these. If anybody can tell me what they are, I will tell you the story of how I got them and why I don't know the name of them. I was at the gift fair at Grand Central one Christmas and these were extremely expensive. There was a vendor there who was doing um, Edwardian and Art Deco and Belle Epoch reproduction jewelry in really fine. They were doing it themselves. They were a studio and this is all sterling and crystal, really fine crystal. Look at the back of that. And these were $400 <laughs> and I did not want to spend $400. I didn't go through Grand Central intending to spend $400. I barely had $400, but I figured out a way to get them and I got them. And I'm so happy because they are so beautiful and they look real. They had pictures of the real ones that they based their designs on. And these have worn just as, I mean, to me, they look more real now than they did then because of the way that they've aged. And that was probably the 90s or the early 2000s. So if anybody knows who that company was that did these, I also had another pair that was a little smaller that I sold, sadly. Um, they're not marked anywhere. I know that they're sterling, but they're, they're amazing. And they still look good to this day. No matter how old I get, those are going to be good. These are, these were a present from my mom. This jewelry box came from QVC, in case you're wondering. This was a present from my mother for my collection, you know, for because I had just inherited jewelry from my grandmother. So she got me this amazing jewelry box, which I believe is still available. And then the collection just grew from there and I filled it up and I eventually moved on to other boxes. This is a Limon quartz carved crystal on a gold wire. And that's very modernist and minimalist and cool. And that was a present from her as well. And that was probably after I became a more serious collector, but before I had filled up this box and moved on to other ones. These came from eBay. I loved them. These are sterling. They're from Thailand. They have a great length and a great shimmer and they're really fun in the summer with little summer dresses. And you can see the progression here because these are not every day but they're not exactly crazy vintage or collectory vintage. They're good, you know, useful earring, but they're a little bit more statementy. So you can see how I started with the statement stuff first. And then let's see what else is in here. These are serpentine and Biwa pearls. I got these in a department store. I think it was Daffy's in New York. These were a present from my friend Danielle in our 20s. She's going to see this and be like, oh, my God, I thought, I thought I sold those in a garage sale or something. No, she might have had her own pair that she sold in a garage sale, but she gave me these. These are Indian sterling and amethyst. This I got at a craft fair. This is one of my first craft fair purchases. It's like stamp shaped sterling and little random beads. And, you know, that was the 1980s. So those have done nothing but increase in value. 
And then these you'll see throughout the box. These I made, these little beads, and I have these 14 karat gold um, ear wires. So there's little beads everywhere because I used to interchange these in all the different colors. And then these are carved um, mother of pearl, pink mother of pearl flower shells. So humble beginnings, you know, but you can see it's starting. And then let's take a look at this. This. Okay. There's, oh, here's the hummingbirds. Okay. More Chinese enameling, Pinefield sterling. Look at the colors. This is a multi-chrome color hummingbird. It's got pink and lavender and blue and turquoise. And they hang from the ear so that they look like they're in flight and they're tiny and exquisite. And these I got, believe it or not, on eBay. Like, just because I didn't know what I was getting myself into. These became, you know, Chinese and now became like crack. <laughs> but, so that was very early on in the vintage journey. Then here's another example. I like the way these hang. They have, they keep their kind of gracefulness because they don't, they're not articulated. So they always look like that. And again, just incredible. It's not really cloisonné, in case you're wondering. There's no gold wire that separates the colors. These are Art Deco. I thrifted these in my 20s. And they are 14 karat gold and nail pearl and synthetic rubies. And what's so interesting about these is the back. They have this ball back. They have a screw post and a ball back. And I should really check these for Hallmarks again now that I have learned to read Hallmarks. Those are synthetic rubies, which is what they did in the Art Deco period. It's just totally indicative. It makes it actually makes it easier to authenticate them as real Art Deco. And look at the back. Isn't that just the most interesting thing? And it makes them really comfortable. These, I had made, there were four of these. These are Art Deco. They were originally cufflinks and they're carved mother of pearl. So there's a little paste in there. And these are just fine cufflinks and there were two on each cufflink. Ah. So I had them made into earrings and they were supposed to be a special present. Um, I kept a pair and then I gave a pair to my sister. And I actually went to a jeweler, but that is how they... Um, to apply the backing, but it works and they're gorgeous and they look great on. So if you have any old cufflinks, it's a really good way to use them. These are Bohemian garnet studs, probably 1930s by then. These are cremants. These are worth showing you. If you see these in vintage shops, either online or in the wild, they will know what they are, but it's possible to find fine jewelry, cremants in thrift stores. Sometimes people don't always know what they have if they are um, donated. And these, I think I found these thrifting, actually, in my 20s. And they are cremants gold and pearl from the 1950s. These are an amazing little thing. I'm so glad I have these to show you. So these are Victorian and it was very common in Victorian times to put the ear wire through the back of the ear and then clasp the earring through the front. So if you see something like that, you might be looking at a Victorian era. And look at that. Look at the, uh, the side work. This is a low carat gold. These are really, really lovely, well made. And I might be willing to part with these. So if, you, if anybody has any interest in those, let me know, HudsonVintage at me.com. But now you know what to look for. You are on the hunt yourself and you see something that looks like it was a mistake because it hooks backwards. It's probably, and it looks like it's well made, of course. That might be Victorian. These are little costume, early 1950s costume faux coral and pearl with the screw back. You can see that there. 
This is more enameling. Oh God, these are so beautiful. These are um, from the Art Deco period. Look, so I love the articulation on these. So the same way I liked the non-articulation on the other ones, I love the articulation on these on these hanging flowers. Um, these like little bleeding heart type flowers are so beautiful. These are old antique cameos. This was a good vintage starter. They're very everyday. They're not super statementy, but they're old carved uh, cameos from Italy. Uh, these are probably 1930s. Then we have 1980s gold and freshwater pearl. These are very recognizable from the time period. These old crinkly rice pearls were what freshwater pearls used to look like. And there's a left and a right, and those are 14 karat gold. Someone wants those, let me know. That's in vintageatme.com. These are Haleyashi Nobium. So, so here's another crossover from collections. This is the Nobium, and it's the Pansy. And I got these in a boutique in Westchester, and they started me on a Haleyashi thing. This is Haleyashi doesn't really do things like this anymore, but it started out as I really prefer her old work. Aren't they beautiful? And then look at this. These were street fair, these gold drops. I bought them for five dollars. Not street fair, street seller. Guy on the street said they were gold, didn't believe them, paid five dollars. There they are, 20 years later, they're gold. <laughs> these are gorgeous. These are modernist. And I didn't even know what modernist was when I got these, but I fell in love with them. There's a left and a right. They're signed with an artist hallmark that I never did find out about. It must have just been a random craft fair. And they're really beautiful and they're gold over sterling. And then Moving on, this one, oh, this is so much fun. Okay, so these were, I bought these new. These were like an anthropology purchase, gold-filled wire and amethyst, and I thought these were big. Uh -huh. I mean, they are big, but I've gone bigger since then. These are bohemian garnet, little hoop shapes. When I found out about these, I started buying them. Um, if I could, and I'm glad I did because they've just increased in value. Isn't that beautiful? And I'll turn the back. Sorry. These are authentic from the period, and I don't think I paid very much for these at all, and now they're several hundred dollars. These I got at TJ Maxx. I remember the day I was with my sister. They're 14 karat gold and CZ, and I fell in love with them because they look like vintage. Probably they reminded me of my favorite chandeliers that I've already showed you. And they were in the clearance counter, you know, 65% off or something. So I got a really good deal on this. I have no idea, but I remember that they, I couldn't say no to them. And then these were a present for my mom. There's a left and a right here. These little bud, 14 carats. These are moonstone and faceted amethyst briolette. These are antique. And I got those at an antique jewelry store in Tarrytown in Westchester on the layaway plan. These are fascinating. These are, they look like really amazing, giant, luscious bohemian garnet. It's actually more rare now. This is a good lesson. Those big cabochons are carbuncle. And then these are tourmaline, grape, shapes these my grandmother gave me these are opal earrings i inherited those from her these i wore every day these are the old freshwater pearls on 14 karat chains this this was the first expensive vintage earring i bought these are beautiful edwardian that's enameling it's not a stone and the setting has very fine floral enameling these everyday little gold pretty hoops. I got a lot of compliments on these. These were a gift from my mother. Then the intaglios, I went through an intaglio stage. So there's the different kinds of intaglios with gemstones. Um, these were an early eBay purchase when I first started. They sold these as um, Art Deco. They're not, they're 1970s brass. They might even be like, the diddly links or something now that I look at them now and I have even more uh, knowledge under my belt. They're a pansy, <laughs> but I'm getting more outrageous in my choice. So you can see that I like to search on eBay for pansy earrings. 
<laughs> if we've learned nothing else today, we've learned that. And then these are lovely. These are serpent. These are vintage studio brass. And there's a left and a right. It's that sort of kissing serpent thing. And I don't know how old they are. They're either 70s or 80s. These little guys, more of that uh, wire with the interchangeable beads. Those are aquas. Little peridots, little black onyx. These are little diamond J hoops that were present. Or I might have inherited those. Okay, so this is where the collector really starts to show up. These are three-dimensional little flowers, enamel Chinese pink flowers. Then we have the hoops with the waves, the double-sided waves that you see from the side. Those are so cool. More of the little everyday things. These were craft fair. Those are paper, 1980s. This is vintage 1950s Mexican opal. So if you see something like that, it's probably a good investment. I think they're under a lot of people's radar and they're really pretty. These are antique Chinese. These are more cloisonne, and they're also coral and antique, and these are so fun. And I had no idea what I bought when I bought these. I got really lucky. There's the kingfisher blue and the cobalt and the coral and the length of them and the sterling work with the uh, mill, milligrain. I think I want these for $75. Um, it was a very long time ago, so $75 was worth more than it is now. But these are expensive today. Expensive. And now these, Opalite, these came from a flea market on the Upper East Side, East 66th Street. I actually bought these from the Sage and Offerings people. They actually started at that flea market. So, And then we have more. Imagine that. What a shock. We have more Chinese enamel. These baskets, you can still see on eBay. And if you love anything like that, look for them. They're so beautiful. These colors are especially great. And then these are cool. These are like 1950s Mexican floral enamel. And the whole fun thing about these is that they're totally convertible. They're, first of all, you can wear the reverse to white. So you can do white or black. They come out of these little wires in the back. You could do just the drop or one hoop or two hoops or everything all together or white and black and black and white, whatever. I'm such a sucker for that. And it's rare to find it all together. So I was very happy to find those. That was many, many years ago. Oh, this is cool. This is 1930s. This is like um, almost tramp art, but it's sterling and it's that press stamped um, sterling silver. And the motif is Betty Boots dog. But I love the idea of the dog with the bone <laughs> and the bowl with the dog bones in it and the dog house. I mean, that to me is so spectacular. It's almost punk. It's a versus real art there. Okay, so these good Mexican sterling turquoise and seed curl. Look at the back. These are unmarked. Really beautiful. Good turquoise. There's a left and a right. Everything about it. This was an early vintage find. Um, it's just gorgeous. Have them forever. You know, these are early Gerard Yaska. I have these are from Bloomingdale's. I have the matching choker necklace to these. It came with it had two sets of earrings that were related to it and the choker. So I got both sets of earrings. The other earrings are with it. These are express. Brought them on the way home from work one day. These are street vendor. These are probably 1928 company. More enamel, more Chinese enameling. The colors of this is what got me. And it's like that calla lily. These were some of my very first earrings. These are Catherine for Pesco in the style of Art Deco. When I bought them, I thought they were Art Deco. They're not. They're Catherine for Pesco. These came from um, the Camden stock in uh, a flea market in London. I bought them from the person who made them. And I still have them because this box is so good. I also bought some other silver bean ones that I did not put in this box that got destroyed. Venetian glass, eventually I'm going to turn these into pendants. These are beautiful. has a nice variation. These are real pearl. These are from a store in a city called UNI. I don't know if it still exists. They did just accessories. Look at the side of them. The floaty pearls. Fell in love. I'd buy them. Little crystal butterflies. These might be Joan Rivers. Little Art Deco style. Sterling and CZ. 
more Art Deco styles, Sterling and CZ. These are vintage. These are 1970s abalone and pearl. And look at the way there's abalone crown set in abalone in the way it's carved. That is exquisite to me. It's like a coin, almost like a coin earring. It reads us, and I love that. And then these are Little Express Purple CZ Clovers. These I bought new in the 1980s. Enamel. You can see why I started to fall in love with the Chinese stuff. This is pre Chinese enamel. These are authentic Art Deco. Let's cut through glass. Not much to say about those except hello, beautiful. Early Art Deco. One of my first vintage purchases. And then these are camphor glass. These are also Art Deco. That frosted glass is called camphor glass. Set in like um, a rhodium plated hot metal a little paste. They're absolutely gorgeous. So these are cut black glass. Oops. These, oh, 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 I love these so much. These are also Art Deco. Ta-da. Isn't that lovely? I wore these so often. They're so beautiful. I always have those. And then these are Art Deco rhinestones. And then finally we have these. What I loved about these is how they hung so the flowers went up because that's the ear hook there and also the detail of the back again in the shiny enameling and the multi-chromatic. Okay, early Art Deco rhinestone and floral. These are interesting. These are Canatel. So these are mostly seen sterling, the Canatel wire from Italy, but these have a gold vermeil and a more modern look. So these are, you know, not the super antique hundred year old ones, but probably mid century, uh, 1950s or 60s. These are great on too. These are little created opals and a charm from a bracelet that's a Celtic heart. That's gold. If anyone wants that, let me know. Oh, Plea Cajor, you guys, you must learn about Plea Cajor if you haven't already. That is, you can see through it. That's what Plea Cajor means. And these are very, very fine, super light gold wires. Fine 14 karat gold wires with the see through enameling in the modernist art style. These I made. These were the Haspel pearls that I took apart my first Haspel and destroyed it before I knew what it was to do this. This is one of the things I did with it. Thank you so much for sticking with me. If you're here, if you're still here, please subscribe, click like, ring the bell. Don't do it for me, do it to tell YouTube that you enjoy these videos. And then YouTube will show these videos to more people. And then I will be able to give things away, which is my ultimate goal. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.